Welcome back. Now, the Small and Medium Enterprises Directorate of the BOI has a focus on developing sustainable business models that will assist to unlock the inherent potential of the sector to improve their contribution to national economic growth, job creation, resource endowment, value chain development, skills and entrepreneurial development, poverty alleviation, export expansion, import substitution, and overall GDP growth. I have a development bank and creative sector specialist, Promise Ike Chuku George, joining me now to discuss further. Many thanks for joining me, Promise, on Business Insights. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, in my intro, I said um, the uh, MSMEs uh, play uh, a critical you know, role in the, the GDP and the development of the country. You know. Um, just about over 80% of them are really, uh, you know, growing in um, the sector. But over time, it has been um, discovered that um, one of the issues they have is access to finance, access to fund. And um, the, the complaints I usually get when I talk to some of them, they say they usually can't get um, the required finance to get from the traditional banks or even sometimes the microfinance bank. But what exactly is the challenge? Like the banks are not really ready to loan to MSMEs or they don't really have what it takes to get these financing from banks or even from the bank of the industry? Well, uh, really, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, but you see, I want to start by saying that it's actually a hybrid of factors, right? It's, it's not just a one state jacket, uh, you know, um, um, factor. Now, why, why, what I meant by hybrid of factors is that, first of all, right, access to funding, okay, the fund has to be there. And then what are the terms and conditions for accessing this fund? So when you say access to funding, what it means is that every financial institution has got its risk acceptance criteria, okay? Yeah. So the ability of SMEs in meeting the risk acceptance criteria yeah. of their financial institution matters a lot. So if you're not meeting it, it will be difficult for you to access the finance, even when the funding is there. Okay, let me butt in. If yes. they're not meeting the risk uh, you know, that you talked about, is it that they are so risky to the extent that banks cannot really uh, you know, give them these loans or they, they don't, have not been able to structure their business to the extent that um, they can actually scale it up? Okay, so it's not a one-size-fits-all, right? Now, when we say access to financing, right, there are certain requirements that they have to meet, okay? Mm. And this requirement is not standard across. You know, some banks too you know, are concessional, you know, in setting these times and conditions, all right? Mm -hmm. Why some are also tough, okay? But it's for the purpose of risk management. Because you see, when you talk about access to funding, the most important thing that the bank also has to take into consideration is if the money is going to come back, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's a revolving fund. So when these funds are lent out, this fund had to come in to be able to continue the cycle of lending, okay? Mm -hmm. So what the banks do is to try to tighten their risk management you know, structure. But mm -hmm. having said that, okay, there are also um, the sides of the MSME mm -hmm. that is not also been straightened. And that's what has to do with structure, mm -hmm. all right? And that's why you see most commercial banks or traditional, let me use traditional banks, mm -hmm. avoid greenfield. Now, the greenfield are those who are just starting you know, their businesses, okay? Mm -hmm. Because they feel, the banks feel, or the traditional banks feel that they have to lend the role. Mm -hmm. And that's why sometimes uh, the proof of concept that you give to your bankers or you show to your bankers is how much you've actually started or you've been able to take off the ground, I mean, go off the ground, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you get to a point where it's okay, I'll need, I'll be needing capital to be able to scale, right? Mm -hmm. But now the question is, if you don't support Greenfield or startups, right, how are you going to have the existing businesses that you're going to fund? Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, that's why you have different levels of financing. Right. There are those you call the venture capital. The venture capital can actually take risk with the startups, okay? Yeah. But we don't have, you know, we just have a few of them mm -hmm. in the country, okay? We don't have a well-structured, you know, venture capital system in the country just the way we have abroad. Mm -hmm. And that's why today the likes of the Google, the likes of the, 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 the big companies or more uh, corporations you see today actually started as startups mm -hmm. because they have a strong venture capital system overseas. But the gap that has been filled, or the institution that's filling the gap right now is the bank of industry okay. because they're bringing development finance into the picture, mm -hmm. they're bringing business support into the picture, mm -hmm. and the terms and conditions are quite concessional. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, so so they, uh, they, they, they address banking from the developmental Perspective. Let's talk about um, terms of um, conditions because that's what um, most um, people ask head of when they uh, look at or think of um, getting um, uh, 
some of these facilities, be they the traditional bank or even uh, microfinance bank and uh, some uh, loan sharks that we see around these days, you know, mainly for the traditional bank, they tend to ask for a whole lot in terms of their collateralized, um, collateralized them loans. That, but for the bank of industry, when you say your, your, um, your conditions are not really so stringent, can you just break it down? Okay, um, let me look. I want to address that from the aspect of the what we call concessional funding mm. in terms of the cost of funding. Mm. Now, cost of funding has to do with the interest rates, right? That is associated with that particular funding. The Bank of Industry offers the lowest, right? Mm. Single digit, double digit, like 10% maximum. That's the right. highest cost of funding. Mm. So it's cheaper, you know, for the entrepreneurs compared mm. to what you have in the conventional banking system. Mm. The average is out maybe 27%, 28%, or 29%. So that's quite, seems to be quite high. You know, for the SMEs, okay, True. who are also, you know, faced with the challenges of cost factors in the environment. Because, you see, we, don't, we have to also take into consideration the cost environment. And that's why when we talk about the ease of doing business, it's quite critical, right? Mm -hmm. So now, if somebody's contending or an entrepreneur is contending with 27%, you know, interest rate as cost of funding, and it's still challenged with energy pricing, energy mm -hmm. high energy cost, okay, that entrepreneur may not survive that environment. Right. So looking at the external factors, right, the government has to take care of that. Then looking at even the access to funding, government, the, the present dispensation now is getting mm. seriously involved, mm. all right, in that aspect because of high cost of funding. So what they're doing right now is to bring in funding, mm. maybe intervention funding, mm. okay, to see how they can cushion the fact. But I want to also um, make a point here is that when you're bringing the funding, Right, the terms and condition, which is the bane of what the SMEs are facing, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, the collateral. Mm -hmm. Okay, that collateral aspect, the security aspect, has to be relaxed, but to some extent. So, this is the time that bankers, or traditional bankers, or the system, will begin to look at a creative financing method. Okay, and that is where BOI has actually fared so well. Mm -hmm. If you recall, in the creative industry, I don't know if you heard about the Nolly Fund. Mm -hmm. That was actually it's designed true. by BOR. Mm -hmm. The Nolly Fund was an interventionist measure, mm -hmm. you know, within the creative, creative industry, industry space. You know, for those who are producing a movie, for those who actually require equipment, production and post-production equipment, and even the distribution platforms. So, you know, they were actually referenced and given loans without collateral. Okay, so it was a special fund, and it did a lot of, a lot of impacts. A lot of impacts were actually failed in the system. I mean, this is a system. I mean, this is a uh, what's called a funding program that sorted the production of 25 films. Mm. And most of those films today are on Netflix, you know, Amazon and so on and so forth, all right? So it's actually activated some kind of ecosystem, right, that we're actually hearing about today. When you talk about the Nigeria, you know, movie industry, right, that program was actually an, an activator, mm. okay, to that impact that we are seeing today. So when you begin to look at that kind of creative funding system, all right, it will go a long way. Again, the venture capital scheme, is another aspect that government should begin to look, look into, mm -hmm. right? And then you can power private, 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 first, uh, private investors or private sector mm -hmm. to also begin to look at, you know, coming up with venture capital. Mm -hmm. But all in all, there has to be incentives, okay? There has to be incentive. Because when you incentivize the environment, the players there, you know, tend to be a bit relaxed, right? Tend to be a bit relaxed in terms of, you know, the, the terms of condition that they sure. put out. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that is why, Overseas, like I mentioned earlier, the levels of banks. Mm. There are conventional banks that an MSME that is just starting may not go to because they don't fit into the bill. There are also financing that MSME can also approach. Mm. So we, when you have hybrid financial systems, they can cater you know, to different levels of entrepreneurs. All right. Let's talk about um, structures now of um, there's um, MSMEs because that's is seemingly one of the barriers that they, they usually have. What can you really advise them to do? Some of them, they have issues of maintaining proper bookkeeping, proper records and all of that. And over time, they, because of all of these one or two issues, they cannot really get the right funding that they deserve. I just want you to address that. Yes, sir. That, that's, that's quite critical, right? Because you see, um, a funder with a financial institution, with a venture capitalist, uh, where the private fund is, what they also look at, what they look at is your profile. Mm. You understand? They look at your, what they call the a business plan. Mm. Okay? They look at, in fact, they want a situation whereby they can put in money in a highly de-risked enterprise. And how do you de-risk your enterprise? It's by bringing a structure. What are the structures we're talking about? Bookkeeping system. Okay? 
Somebody called me the day before yesterday to say, I've been getting a lot of patronage, but I can't reconcile my profit and my expense. Mm. Okay? So I know he needed, she needed help, right, in cost accounting structure. So what I did was to advise her to say, you know what? You have to get a, a cost accounting advisor to put you to. So you would understand the difference between the profit and loss. Mm. So that perspective is what the MSME is, who are just starting, should be looking at. Now, the first structure you have to put in place is the accounting structure. Because business is about cost and income. If you're not able to reconcile uh, th those, two, um, those two elements, mm. right, you might begin to lose from day one. And so when you have statistics like, so this is telling us that the SMEs dies you know, within the first three years of the operation, it's simple because they cannot give account of their, their processes. Mm. Okay? Now, even at that, okay, MSME should be able to have procedures, processes. Okay? Now, should be able to have system. Of course, you may not be able, you know, to employ all the professionals within, but there are circumstances where you can actually outsource, okay? That is where capacity building comes in. You can also begin to expose yourself to some capacity building to begin to build some, you know, knowledge around how system, how businesses yes. can be managed. But most importantly, the human begin, begin with accounting structure. Once you have accounting structure, you'll be able to account for your expense, you'll be able to account for your profit. In fact, even starting from, from the cost, you'll be able to arise at the pricing strategy. Mm. Some, or most of them, can't even get their pricing right. Mm. You might be underselling, okay? Mm. You may be underpricing your product. And the moment you start doing that, you're actually losing income, and then you can, you, you can fast track mm. the debt of your business. All right. That's what it is, yeah. You talked about uh, the intervention that the BOI did for the creative industry, which is actually something that is very uh, laudable. Now, but let's talk about um, other plans that you have for small businesses. Let me just uh, paint a scenario here. I have a business that's, uh, um, that's, uh, that's worth about um, 5 million naira, and I'm thinking of scaling up. Uh, the, the year is ended. I'm thinking of scaling up. I'm thinking of uh, maybe expanding. And I hear that um, the BOI can assist me in terms of uh, scaling up my business. So for a business such as myself, how do I approach the BOI? Well, right. The, the BOI, too, also has, has, uh, has in place hybrid financing structure. Mm. Or set. We have for the micro, have for the small, the small, medium enterprise, we have mm. for the large enterprises. Okay. Uh, these are the big players, actually. Of course, you need these three three uh, factors or these three segments True. to be able to keep the cycle of economy, you know, sustainable, okay? Mm -hmm. Because the large enterprise produces, those that constitute the value chain are the M MSMEs or the SMEs because they are the mm -hmm. distributors. True. And then you see the micro too, also mm -hmm. the retailers, you know, who are, who are out there on the street to ensure that what is produced by the large enterprise or the SMEs actually get to the final consumer. So it's a chain, Evolution. okay, all right. Yeah. So, so, so what happens is that depending on where you are, Mm -hmm. On the point of the value chain where you are, as a micro, right? Mm -hmm. You're already doing five, your turnover, five million naira business, mm -hmm. and then you want to scale. You want mm -hmm. to scale because the demand is actually coming. Mm -hmm. There's a sustained level of demand or increase mm -hmm. in, in your demand for your product, mm -hmm. right? With your books, you can actually convince a BOI to say, please, if you're able to give me a one, two, three, I'll be able to increase my capacity utilization, okay? Or my production capacity to be able to meet mm -hmm. the demands, right? Then I'm not feeling. So in that circumstances, because of the level of the loan that you mentioned, if I use the example mm. of five million, you don't need any collateral, mm. right? What they want to see is your books, okay. and probably a guarantor, right, who can stand by, by you. Right. So any loan that's less than ten million naira, you can actually access fund for BOI without, without security. collateral. Oh, yes. that's cool. Yeah. All right, uh, so the year is ending, and uh, there's been um, so much talk about um, collaboration between the federal government and the BOI. I know there are several interventions that you have done over time. Can you share uh, very quickly as we wrap up the ones that you have done and what you're looking at for the year 2024? Okay, really, we've, we've done a number of um, you know, intervention programs that mm -hmm. cuts across youths, right? Uh, we, we had one they called the Youth you know, Empowerment Program or Youth Empowerment Scheme called YES. Right, we have a number of them. We will also have for the gender businesses, mm. right? So it's uh, it's multivalued, natural science, all right? Mm. And that's why the federal government recognizes BOI as an interventionist institution. Okay, so most of the interventions they're going to be actually, you know, um, rolling into the system. We have to come to BOI right. because of our, you know, um, his, our expertise in fund management, right? And it takes 
an institution, there's accountable, an institution mm. that understands, you know, what it takes, you know, to spearhead impact to be able, you know, to do what we're going to be doing. So there are a number of programs that are actually coming, talking about the 75 billion naira, mm. you know, federal government fund, yeah. right? Then in the aspect of the creative industry um, um, segment, we have what they call IDAs, investment in, you know, digital <coughs> mm. and, you know, creative enterprises. It's called IDAs, okay? It's been, it's at the, an advanced stage, so uh -huh. it's going to be fully launched out anytime okay. so in terms of operation. So all the documentations are ongoing because it's a multi-collaboration, you know, uh, 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 strategy, a multi-collaboration program mm. that's been driven by federal government, you know, to Bank of Industry uh -huh. and other international financial institutions, okay. like the ADB and other, um, you know, inst international institutions, uh -huh. right? It's a 260 million dollar fund. So mm -hmm. one that, when, when that takes off, it's going to be impacting, you know, youths, right, who are within the creative and the digital space. And, of course, that's the new world business order. All right. So we need to empower that sector to mm -hmm. be able to move us to the next day. You know? Okay. Uh, in 30 seconds, one last um, word, one last um, advice for a struggling small business and uh, who has been hit by, you know, the economic um, situation in the past six months with um, a fuel subsidy removal and uh, inflation and all of that. What would your advice um, to that business be? Yes, sir. Uh, um, as a small business, right? Whether you're small, whether you're, you're in a medium space, you need to watch your cost, mm -hmm. right? Because the only way you can actually make some margin is to have control over your cost. Yeah. You may not have absolute control, but those costs you can actually have control over, yeah. you try to manage it. And then you also, you have to be accountable right mm. hold yourself as an accountable treat yourself as one of your staff mm. yes you're the business owner but when you begin to associate yourself as a staff of that organization yeah. right it's also fine but most importantly you have to have a vision right because vision drives everything mm. so once you have that vision right it informs the decision you're going to be taking at the bottom you know right. level right mm. but most importantly you look at your cost you look at your income right. and then you understand that sustainability is a factor of accountability mm. Mm. Yeah. thank you so much i promise we do appreciate yeah. um, your time um, for, and all of course um, all of um, the useful insights that you have shared on the show today yeah you're welcome thank you very much for yeah it is indeed a pleasure my guest has been promise uh, and uh, ikechuku been promise ikechuku george and we have been looking at small businesses financing funding and of course access to capital but that's the size of the show for today we'll say a very big thank you to all of you who sat back to watch. My name is Justin Akademi. Uh, Business Insight returns to your screen. Same time again. Bye for now.